um, Monday, September 25th, 2023. It is now 6.30 p.m. And this is the uh, start of the regularly scheduled Norton Conservation Commission. And as is required, we need to read a preamble because it's a remote meeting. So, Dan, if you have that. I do. Uh, okay. Uh, pursuant to Governor Haley's March 29th, 2023 bill extending several COVID-era policies and programs by allowing virtual meetings to continue from March 31st, 2023 to March 31st, 2025, this meeting of the Norton Conservation Commission will be conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Specific information and the general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and or parties with a right and or requirement to attend this meeting can be found at the end of this agenda. Members of the public attending this public hearing slash meeting virtually will be allowed to make comments if they wish to do so during the portion of the hearing designated for public comment by raising their hand virtually or pressing star nine if participating by phone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so, despite best efforts, we will post on the Norton Cable website, www.nortonmediacenter.org, an audio or video recording transcript or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. You, thank you, Dan. So uh, tonight uh, we have participating myself as chair, Lisa Carosa as vice chair, uh, Ron O'Reilly, Dan Pearson, um, Lisa Carrozza, Mark Fernandez. Thomas, uh, Thomas not here this evening. Tom, okay. Was that the only, let's see, we have two, four, five. Yes, okay. So Tom is the only one absent. We have John Thomas as our director and uh, Megan Harup as our assistant. Um, so the first uh, batch of new public hearings. So it involves, uh, I, I know they have three different numbers, uh, but it's all on one contiguous parcel. So are we going to be discussing all three of these simultaneously, John, or do we have to discuss them separately? What's the proper protocol? My, my understanding is that they strategically opened up the three projects, but we can open them all up um, in sequence to be discussed as a whole. Is that correct, Dan? He's nodding his head, so I assume that's correct. That is correct. That is what we're hoping for. All right. So our um, public hearings uh, involve file numbers 250-1129, <laughs> 1130, and 1131. Um, they're called Zero Mansfield Avenue, but it uh, is a triangular parcel at the junction of Reservoir Street and Mansfield Avenue, labeled lot C, D, and E. So do we have a representative of the applicant? Uh, we have a number of representatives of the applicant. I'm Jack Jacoby. I'm the attorney, uh, Coogan Smith and Attleboro. Uh, Nick Ryder from Pacern is on with us. I can see Scott Goddard is connecting. Uh, I believe he's our wetland specialist. But the man of the hour is Dan Campbell from Level Design, who's going to uh, be the presenter. Okay, take it away. You're Good evening, for, Mr. You're Mr. Probably, Chairman, members uh, of the commission. You want sharing uh, capacity, which you probably if are. If possible. Okay. Yes, please. You're all set. Excellent. So my name is Dan Campbell, uh, Level Design Group on behalf of the applicant. What we have for you is a project, and the reason <clears throat> the reason it is um, three separate applications is it's three separate buildings, it's three separate parcels. The way the application started, we had uh, multiple parcels at the corner of Reservoir and Mansfield Ave. 
um, that's owned by Pacern. We have uh, six total parcels, um, this lot, this lot, this lot, and then the three at the corner. These two lots are owned by another party. <clears throat> in our design, and the reason we uh, sort of consolidated them, exactly what you said, uh, Mr. Chair, is, you know, they're, they're contiguous parcels. They should be discussed around the same wetlands. We're talking about the same hydrology, ultimately. Um, so we wanted to present them as one, but they are three separate parcels, three separate applications. What we have for you um, and what we submitted today for discussion is our first public hearing. So we have uh, lot C, lot D, and lot E. Lot E is closest to the corner of Reservoir and Mansfield Ave. Lot C is, is furthest to the north, um, closest to the border. We have lot C is a um, apartment building, 24 units with associated garage and surface parking area which then drains uh, through a pipe system to an open basin at the rear of lot C. Lot D, similarly, 24 unit building, garage. Um, this has a utility shed and dumpster area, which drains to a surface detention basin at the rear of the property. Lot D also contains um, drainage from Mass Highway. Mass Highway's catch basin system as it comes down Mansfield Ave, both directions, drains to uh, a headwall uh, overland as it is today. And we're going to capture that and, and pipe it to the rear of the site closest to um, the, the rear of our proposed grading. One, before we move on to lot E, lot C and lot D, um, there was discussion from uh, between John and Scott Goddard uh, as to locations of the wetland flags. And for the purposes of tonight's meeting, I do have both sets of flags turned on. This darker line at the rear is the, the previous and the submitted wetland flags. This dashed line in the front, as you can see, comes out here. Uh, this is the discussed line um, between Scott Goddard and, and John in the field. That happens in two locations on C and D. Uh, here, where you can see the, the largest differential. And then here, where you can see, as we're coming around the corner, towards the property or towards the project, um, there is some differential. And then it cuts off this larger area to the rear. Um, and John and Scott agreed that the wetlands comes across this area. So this is also uh, bordering vegetated wetlands. On lot E, we have a uh, slightly less differential as you come around. You can see we join flags in different locations as we come across the site, with this point being the, the furthest off of, of what was originally flagged. Lot E, the property on the corner, is a 24-unit building, parking lot, two garages, and utility shed. It is by itself independent from the other two. Um, Let me just uh, interrupt. Uh, sure. If you could uh, enlarge it just a hair, that would be... That would I help. absolutely can. Is that helpful? Oh, uh, that looks good. All right. So in this case, what we actually did was we brought the drainage forward rather than to the rear. And then we have the overflow to the rear. Um, there are going to be some changes to this based upon the planning board, but we wanted to, to talk tonight about general scope and scale, the wetlands themselves. And then um, the one major change that we had prior to this hearing and one of the reasons that it took the time that it did, is we've talked to the sewer department and we've realigned the sewer down Mansfield Ave. Um, it was going down reservoir. As we know, there's some wetlands along reservoir that we would have had to contend with. There's also some areas um, <clears throat> that the sewer department felt were better served along Mansfield than they were along reservoir. So we've surveyed and realigned the sewer. This is the tip of lot E here. So we're coming down Mansfield Ave. The match line is here. This is the baseball field at um, Wheaton. This is the intersection where we join uh, 123 and 140 for the discharge of our proposed sewer. So <clears throat> we're no longer going down Reservoir Ave. We are coming down Mansfield. There are no additional wetlands along Mansfield Ave. 
um, and we're able to lay the sewer in a manner that the sewer department um, uh, has asked us to in addition to to what we had previously. So, um, you know, as I said, we have Scott with us tonight to talk the actual wetlands, the wetlands flagging. I am more than willing to answer drainage questions. Um, overall layout, scale, scope, um, where we're close to the wetlands, where we're a little bit further away, um, styles of drainage, things of that nature. But we will be submitting a, a modified site plan in, in conjunction with the planning board hearing that we're going to have tomorrow night having to do with the sewer for one, having to do with building orientation for another. Um, but uh, we thought it was is prudent to to get with the commission, start having some of these these conversations, especially around the wetlands themselves before uh, before we went back to planning as well. All right, are you at the point of uh, opening things up to questions? I am more than happy to answer any questions. Well, I mean, do you have more you want to uh, present? I, no, no I, I think at this stage, this is probably probably good for the presentation. I'm happy to, to field any questions. So I guess we should start um, either with our director or our members of the commission for questions. Um, I have no questions. I just, I, I believe I reiterated some items in my memo to the board on kind of what needs to happen next. But uh, the peer review for the stormwater and just some tweaking to the plans to make sure they're in conformance with the stormwater handbook and things of that nature. And, and uh, I'll leave it to the commission to ask any other questions. Well, I guess I could start with a question. So this, this project depends on new sewer line being laid. Is that correct? As it's designed currently, yes. <clears throat> Um, and I guess, I, I guess this is kind of a general question. I, it's more, I don't know if you can feel this at all, John, but is the, is the philosophy of the town now to sewer areas that, uh, in order to enable development as opposed to primarily critical need areas, um, has there been discussion of that? That, if, if I if I can address, Mr. Chair, yeah. um, the the sewer department um, allows private developers to come through and and develop certain areas or extend the sewer at their own cost. There's there's no cost to the town for extending the sewer. The reason we're no longer going down reservoir and we're coming down Mansfield Ave is is the town is seeing or the sewer department is seeing a greater need along Mansfield Ave than they have along reservoir for the projects at hand. Um, so they've asked us to shift gears from reservoir because, as you know, the town themselves is now discharging or planning to discharge to the reservoir Ave sewer, the initial pump station prior to the secondary, um, with the project that the town's currently undertaking on 123. So they've asked um, us to, to change around uh, our design to then sewer Mansfield which assists them in other projects that, that they see coming forward. Um, so it's, it's not the town uh, providing sewer, it's the town allowing a private developer to put in sewer for servicing in an area that they, they planned to service at some point, just it's not on their current project schedule. Well, I, I mean, the, the, when there when there's a critical need as there was um along reservoir street in in what's termed the grove um where there was a critical need because all of the septic systems were inadequate and they were uh, resulting in significant pollution into the reservoir uh and so the strategy of well as residents there you have to connect and this is a this is a an obligation i don't know the answer as to whether people along mansfield have have failing septic systems and therefore would be um uh, positively uh oriented toward spending the money to connect but um 
you say there's no cost to the town, but uh, individuals that are being for that would be forced to connect because now the sewer is there would bear yeah. costs. But yeah, that, so they, is obviously, that is obviously outside the Wetlands Protection Act, but it's a, a peripherally related item in in this particular project. Uh, absolutely, to a degree, and we did we did. Um, go over this with both the planning board and um, the sewer department in a joint public hearing that the town bylaws don't require anybody to connect until their septic system fails. And if they happen to be a greater distance, <clears throat> they can price out the two options. And if it's it's priced out of their ability to be able to connect to it in a financially feasible manner, Title V does give you some latitude in that as well. But there's no requirement to connect except for the state requirement that when your system fails, a connection must occur. Um, and that, that would be typical of, of anywhere. Um, also, you know, available sewer clearly uh, permits that. There are, I believe, six or seven individual single family homes that are a little bit further away from the sewer line. And they may be in that, that category that I said, but there's sewer being available. Um, it's coming to a commercial area, commercially zoned area, uh, which this is uh, along Mansfield Ave in accordance with the sewer department. All right. Do we have any um, other questions from commission members? <clears throat> yeah, Dan. Can you sure. uh, let's start with lot C? I want you to go over uh, what is within the 100 foot and then what's within the 25 foot no build, how close you're getting, uh, and what you did to minimize intrusion in the buffer, and more importantly, at the at very edge of the 25, which is probably not realistic. But I'll let you answer that. Sure. Um, I'm happy to go over it lot by lot. So we'll start with lot C. Um, the 100 foot buffer zone is this line out in here. So primarily, though we have small portions of the building itself, primarily we have drainage structures inside the, the 100, between the 100 and um, the wetlands themselves. And I know the area that you're talking about having to do with the, the walls that we plan to construct. What we plan to construct with is the gravity block um, ready rock style wall, which is a three foot um, front to back style structure. The base course of that is 720 pounds um, and they can be constructed with or without geotech fabric. So they are um, fairly vertical in the position that, that you have. So it's not, <clears throat> it's not even the footprint of a, a standard Allen block wall where you need a significant amount of movement around there to be able to place these. These are brought in by a heavy machine before they ever start backfilling the site. The wall blocks themselves are backfilled and then they are um, basically integrated into the, the landscape themselves. Certainly we could move that wall back a couple of feet if that was, that was a concern as well. So the line work that you're showing on the wall to the south there looks like it's connecting those two, the, grace, the baiting for the grace, uh, uh, grading for the basins on lot C. Yep. So the t is that the toe or the top of that wall at the 20, is that at the, that's at the 25 no build, correct? This is the 25 no build. The wall itself is here. Um, and that would be the base of that wall. We do show erosion control about six, eight inches off the base of the wall. So you'll have room to construct it from yes. that line. And you'll have yeah. room to maintain it if it needs to be maintained without going into the 25? Absolutely. Okay, um, let's look at the next unit over. So sure. it looks like you have a wall in the almost the building corner right on the 25 foot no build. So, right. tell, me, so tell me how people are going to walk around that building. So first and foremost, when, when we started the conversation, as I said, we're doing a little reorientation of the building structures themselves. Um, and that's I understand the concern about getting around the corner of the building, and we will show at least a three and a half to four foot um, pathway of grass in the final plan that we ask you to to approve. So essentially, those units have zero backyards. So you're, um, going, to have, so you're, you're going to have 
potentially, so it's 24 units. How many bedrooms per unit? Um, there are ones and twos shown in that um, that structure. So there are uh, a total in that structure in the um, 30s for total bedrooms. As far as grass and landscape area, the intention of having the buildings as far apart as they are on C and D is exactly that. It's a green space. Um, it's a place for them to go. This particular developer uses that grass to, you know, set up um, cornhole games and things of that nature for the residents of, of the property. Um, we will have a backyard and a walking area for those units to be able to get around in the final plan we submit to you. So is this a, all right, so your first floor elevation on this is 125. The existing grade is what, 117? So you're going to have an eight foot high wall back there? At some point, at the back of the at building? The, at the highest point, that is the current intention, yes. So it's eight feet. Okay. Um, I, and in case you need a comparison or you're in Plainville um, near the YMCA, there is a wall that is made of these exact same blocks um, about nine to ten feet tall at the Y itself, um, just down the hill. So do you have a detail um, showing how the contractor is going to um, install the sediment control <clears throat> and then work on that wall? As I said, we will we will provide all of that once the, the final, we're discussing tomorrow night a building orientation with the planning board for some of these exact issues. So yes, I will have that wall detail for you the next time we meet. Okay, and then moving on to the last lot there. Um, um, maybe you don't have, can you just walk me on to this 25? So you, you don't have as much in the 25 here, correct? Just well, we don't, have it, we don't have anything in the 25 throughout the site, but we don't have any walls associated with the development on lot E at all. Um, what we do have is we have the drainage at the front of the property, um, daylighting to the rear of the property closest to reservoir as it is today. Essentially, you can see there's um, some swale that forms along the property, comes to a point around here, and then is, is heading towards the wetlands. There is a small grass swale at the base of this slope because turning that slope from a wooded area into grass by itself uh, created us a condition where we needed to slow down the water on property on the rear. So we did create a secondary swale in that, that grass area with an overflow in this location um, for exactly those, those drainage purposes. Okay. Um, sorry, I just want to move back to that other lot while you're at it with the planning board, the one beside sure. it. It almost seems to me that if you can flip the building with the detention base and angle that building, you will not have to build maybe up to that 25. And I'd ask you to look at that. I, I can tell you that that is one of the exact things we are looking at. Um, the yeah. planning board, there's some discussions on orientation. Um, one of the things that the planning board had asked us to do was to place the parking lots behind the buildings rather than in front of them. Um, my concern with placing the parking lots behind the building is now we have parking direct discharge or overland possibility to the wetlands versus forcing all that water forward, forcing it into to treatment of some sort before we discharge it into those detention basins. So having the, the parking lot right along the wetlands was not our first choice. Yeah, if you put the parking back there, what essentially you're saying is you won't have the room to put the basin in the parking. You won't have we, would have, we, we would put the basins underneath the parking, and I, I think the open basin in a case like this makes it far more residential. Okay, yeah, so I would definitely look for you to flip the location so that okay. just to put those two elements on this plan, it makes a little more sense to me, and then angle it. it. Not everything has to be 90 degrees to the street like we like to draw it, like an engineer, I get it, but we can get crazy and actually angle it so it's uh, you're not fighting the grade. I'm not wearing my bow tie today. I'm happy to angle it. Okay, thank you. If if necessary. Yes. Yeah. We'll we'll take a look at it before we present it planning tomorrow. 
Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else have a question in the commission? Uh, and if not, we can open it up to any uh, one in the audience who might have questions about this. And um, so there's a, a raise your hand icon. If you go to uh, reactions, you can punch the button and it'll show on our screen. Or you could just speak up, but uh, you have to identify yourself um, when you be ask your question. So there's a computer labeled Bill R. Uh, why don't you go ahead with your question? Hi, this is Jane Hundy. I'm at Southern Reservoir. So I'm one of what's referred to in Norton by locals as one of the 10 new houses. These houses are over 20 years old and none were built. Some. My turn is if you're putting in the buildings assumed with their four stories and their roof on you better than that one more. Foundation, there are several garages. Most of them here now have sump pumps. Some of the properties go underwater. My kids have personally taken a cock out in the front yard um, during the year rain storms. And I'm sorry to cut you off. We're having a really, buildings, really hard that time to, hearing you. Uh, I'm sorry to cut you off. You keep cutting in and out. Is there any way you can call in to the number? The connection is just Yeah, there. we'll call back. All right, thank you. We'll wait. Can you hear any better now? Yes, we can hear better now, yes. Okay. So my concern being a property owner on Reservoir Street. Uh, your, your mic is off. It just went off. All right, you're back on. Try, try again. Looks to be some yeah. Uh, Hi, can you? Well, we we hear you, but it looks like you're you're kind of frozen. So I don't know how good the connection is. My re my recommendation is just to call in. It's easier. Your your internet keeps cutting in and out, and we can't really hear what you're saying. Okay, can't get full sentences. All right. Any other question? We'll give them a couple minutes to uh, to call in. Um, I, I heard some of what she was trying to ask, and that is that, uh, but he, he, there was a discussion. There, there is no basement in these units. Is that correct? So I, I, I believe her concern is her basement floods. Um, so what are we doing to mitigate the, the water? And, and hopefully we answer that question. Um, we'll have the peer review. Um, once John and I, you know, finalize this plan, we'll we'll start the peer review on the drainage itself, showing that we are not increasing any of the peak flows or volumes off the property. Um, the wetlands themselves, we've used the uh, wetlands as the control points in different locations. So we're we're using the overall um, wetland edge, not the volume of the wetlands itself, for for control. Um, to make sure that we are mitigating as we get there, not mitigating interior to there. So hopefully that addresses, we're, we're not going to increase peak flow or volume. Well, that's that's now your requirement. I, absolutely, uh, but the, the neighbors don't necessarily know, so. No, I understand. Yeah. But I think they're asking about groundwater intrusion, right? That's typically why you need a sump pump. In, in addition to, you know, contributing overland flow. Sure. But I think that's the question, but it, it also looks like your first floor elevations are quite higher than the wetland. Correct. And there's no basements. 
Um, actually, while I have you, I forgot to ask about snow plowing and storage. So snow plowing and storage, one of the reasons that um, the town of Norton requires us to be 20 feet away from um, any of the buildings with parking is so that there's place to put some of the snow both adjacent to the building um, and other grass areas around the property. We have it labeled on the full set of site plans, but for instance, there's snow storage available in this area. There's snow storage available in the grass area between the buildings if we needed to move it. Um, and we are keeping a uh, wide swath open between the two buildings uh, or between the two sites um, that we've called out as grassed area for, for exactly those reasons if, if we need to move it off of the pavement for parking ne uh, necessity. Well, that's just it. I'm looking at these really short, stubby ways here. There, there's nowhere to push the snow. That's the problem you're going to have. So, for instance, I'm looking at lot E, right? The plow yeah. goes forward. It doesn't go side to side. So where is the snow going to be pushed to? I mean, you have to take a running start. Yeah. And, and maybe on that one side, that's it. So everything is going to have to be plowed to the east or whatever direction that is towards the intersection, right? And for the most part, when you're when they're par plowing a parking lot of this nature, that's exactly what they do with it. They they plow it one direction. Um, right, but you're, you're really limiting it because they can't go to the left. They, they can't plow it to the left over there. That's not feasible, right? You can only go to the right. So I would ask you to look at snow. I don't think it's realistic. I really don't. So I would ask you to come up with a more realistic snow plowing uh, place to plow the snow. Never mind about storage. That's when it gets too high and you got to get a front end loader in. I mean, is this going to be a homeowners association? No, it's it's going to continue to be owned by Pacern Development. Um, they are a company, and, and Nick is here. He can speak for himself. But um, they're a company out of Rhode Island that's been around doing this exact kind of development for, for quite a long time. Yeah. Um, I am certainly happy to take a look at the snow plowing outline a couple of areas for you. And we'll look at it with Nick Snowplow Company um, to make sure that we've got um, directionality that they would like to see. Yeah, I, I don't think you're doing them any favors. I don't think it's practical. So I really like you to make it pra more practical. And um, like I said, I'm I'm happy to take a look at it, especially with the team that we know is going to be doing the plowing. Sure. Uh, thank if you. If I can just jump in, it's uh, Nick, Nick Lord from Concern. Um, you know, to Dan's point, myself. Uh, I handle the development, but the Fusco handles the property management, and his uh, his butt's in the plow every snowstorm. So he's certainly part of the design of this, and we are tweaking some of these things. Snow removal is his number one priority, and he's not 100% happy with it either, so I can assure you that's something we're, we're looking at for cost reasons, just for tenant, um, you know, safety reasons, and for all the reasons that you're concerned about. So it's certainly on the radar. And if I can also jump in, um, based on the planning board's comments to us, this lot E is likely to have a, a different look to it. And so uh, I think that uh, we'll see what their uh, concerns are tomorrow night, but we have some other ideas as to how to develop this lot. So that last speaker was Jack Jacoby? Correct. For the record, just... Uh, uh, to allow Dan to figure out who to credit it to. Um, further comments or questions? I think the one thing that we Hi, this is Jane Rotundi. Can I is some type of barrier in the end? I mean, if you're going to tweak the site plan for planning board review, I think we'd probably be looking for some type of barrier almost the whole way along that wetland. Physical, you know, um, post and rail fence, or uh, I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. Well, let's figure out something that's practical so that the there's no intrusion into the 25 and or the wetland either with grass clippings, lawn people, you know, uh, making their way down to the wetland. Um, just so it's a some type of visual barrier because it's it's really tight and people. So are if you can think about what might be beneficial from oh, the no, that's your job. That's your oh, job. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to put in something. Like I said, post and rail fence is, is definitely an idea. I know that some of the neighbors were concerned about um, animals and things of that nature. 
and they definitely did not want us to put something in the way of of you know somebody coming in and out of the wetlands or or you know heading along reservoir. So a post and rail fence certainly accomplishes that. Deer can jump over them um, pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. I just didn't know if that accomplished your goal as well. If it prevents people from expanding a lawn or um, you know getting into that area, then then that will okay. work. Yeah, that that sounds fine. I'll I'll make sure something's on the plan. Thank you. If it keeps me from writing a violation or enforcement order, we're in good standing. <laughs> All right. There was um, an individual who wanted to ask a question. I, I think you can go ahead and ask your question now. So, Jane Rotundi, on Reservoir Street, my concern is if you're looking at putting 72 units, these houses, the 10 houses that were built here over 20 years ago, none of them were built with sump pumps. Many of the neighbors now have sump pumps just because of natural groundwater. My concern is if you're putting in 72 units across the street, that's going to be a major discharge of water between bathroom use, cleaning, everything else going on, that's going to impact groundwater and negatively impact these homes. I, well, just to, to comment, the way they're proposing it, it will be on sewer. So the, um, the usage of water inside the units won't affect the groundwater, but it will be any, any water shed from the roofs and so on will be potentially infiltrated into the ground. But that's, not, that's what happens right now. And it's not going to be exceeding uh, what happens right now. But, but how, how do you account for going from natural, you know, the trees and whatnot, which absorb this stuff, to then taking the trees down, putting down blacktop, and then having retention ponds that now concentrate the water flow that was spread through all three parcels now to very distinct areas which will impact those of us across the street from said areas you're Andy, concentrating you to, all the water do you want to address that dan i'm happy to so um drainage design you know we we try and make sure that the flow that's going to a specific location in this case everything on this property is is going overland um or even the, the portions that infiltrate are most likely going to create this wetlands that's on property. Um, though we do concentrate, concentrate the, the drainage and we do discharge it um, to some level of infiltration, that level of infiltration is meant from a state standpoint to mimic the overall infiltration on property today. Um, so as long as we're mitigating peak flow and, and total volume of discharge, we may be limiting some of the um, overall flow speed, for instance, that it gets to the wetlands, but the same or similar quantity is getting to those wetlands. And we're promoting infiltration as if some of the, the uh, landscape that's there today does exist. Following the state standards, which I know John will hold me to through the peer review process, um, make sure that, that we're following to a degree um, those requirements, and and we will uh, abide by those. I'm sorry, did you say to a degree following the requirements? We would hope that you follow the requirements entirely. But, sorry, what I mean by that is the requirement is zero change. Usually a design like this changes it in the positive, meaning that it, it's going to decrease the overall flow in those areas. Um, but the technical requirement is, is that you're changing it zero. From an abutters standpoint, and, and I understand development and things change, but when we, as a species, start to, you know, destruct what was once nature, it is not the same. And 
it won't be mitigated. It will be worse for the abutters. So I, I just want the, the Conservation Commission to keep that in mind. Um, if you I don't have to remind me. If I can respond, to Kobe speaking, um, uh, to the abutter, um, our engineering is submitted. Uh, the commission does not have to rely on our engineering. It will be peer reviewed uh, by someone that uh, will be working for the, for the town and for the conservation commission. So all of our figures will be checked. And if there's anything that needs to be changed to make sure that we meet the standard explicitly and 100%, then that will be done. All right. Um, further comments or questions? Uh, if we do not, uh, there is a lot of uh, the, the, these hearings will have to be continued for, for certain, uh, considering you're going before or planning and Absolutely. there may be uh, changes. So if there is no further discussion on this particular project at this time, we can consider a motion to continue. And our uh, next meeting is October 16. The meeting after that is in November the 13th. Um, and what's the submission deadline for the 16th? Uh, we, we need to have everything by by no later than Thursday uh, before the next Monday. So Okay. So, so Thursday, the I thought you meant as in three days from now. Yeah, three days from now. No, uh, the Thursday before the next meeting. So that would be, I want to backtrack here. Can anyone do math? Um, the 12th. Thank you. Okay. Um, if we could continue to the 16th, I feel like at least we'd have um, a large portion of the layout issues um, and the sewer discussion that we're going to have with the planning board tomorrow night ironed out, and we'd be able to have a fruitful discussion that evening. All right. Request, I think we're, we're, our, excuse me, our request then is to continue to the 16th. All right, I think we can consider that, but we need somebody to float that kind of a motion. I'll make a motion to can you continue the public hearing for files uh, 251129, 1130, and 1131 to the October 16th public hearing. Motion by Lisa and seconded by? Second. By Mark. Um, roll call vote beginning with Dan and Ron. Aye. Aye. And Lisa and Mark. Aye. Aye. And I'll throw in an aye. So the motion carries. So we'll see you guys on October 16th. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair and members of the commission. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Our next item on the agenda goes into continued public hearings. Um, it's file number 250-32, notice of intent for 6 Mary Jo Road, uh, Mark Mariano. Um, do we have a representative for that project here tonight? He is not, well, I, I don't know, Scott's still on here? No. Scott's here. But um, uh, I don't know, Scott, did you want to speak on behalf of Mark Mariano? Um. No, I think it's best he, yeah, if, if he's not available, we should probably continue it out. Yeah, he, he told me that he wanted to continue it. So he's waiting on something from you, so. Yeah, I think that makes okay. sense. Oh, okay. okay. Thank you. Yep. So uh, presumably October um, 16th will be a, a reasonable uh, date to continue it to. Uh, so looking for a motion. So I'll make that motion, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I think you got a second in there, Dan. So Lisa made the motion. Dan uh, makes the second roll call vote, starting with Dan and Ron. Aye. Aye. And Lisa and Mark. Aye. Aye. And I'll throw in an aye so the motion carries. So the next hearing is file number 250-1137, notice of intent to 299 South Washington Street. Um, do we have a representative of that? project here tonight. 
Good, good evening, uh, Rich Riccio from Field Engineering. On behalf of the applicant, and I also have Chris Parnock from uh, Adventure Properties here as well. Um, you're the owner of the property. All right. Um, we're back before you. We, we had um, some comments from the commission to address. Um, I'm going to share my screen, if I, if I may. You should be all set now, Rich. Is that, I know it takes a second. Can everybody see my screen now? We can. Okay. I, I can. Um, great. So the main, the main comment or concern was with regards to the construction of the retaining walls and adding a little more detail to the plan. And I also added some more detail um to the to the detail sheet as well uh just showing um the the limit of footing for these um Versalock walls the excavation down to those these are gravity walls similar to the walls you just discussed on the previous project um so i did add a dashed um line which is two feet off of the face of the wall um has shown here and then also, oh, sorry, on this on this wall here as well, that that's um, outside of the twenty five foot, and then um, that'll then the erosion controls will will be outside of that. Um, the The width of this wall line work is is about a foot, um, so it's actually representing both the face of the wall and the the, the back of the wall. The these blocks are um, have a three quarter inch batter for every six inches of height. So we over seven feet. The batter is only uh, ten and a half inches um, there, and that foot that so that's in that foot of the wall on the line work there. Um, I did also update the detail sheet for that wall and, and then I'll go back to the um, erosion controls. Just showing the the two feet that we need for the excavation of the footings, showing the waddles at the limit of work, and also a notation on the detail that any work to construct these walls shall be done from the upgrading inside to the maximum extent practicable. And there'll be shown no work done beyond the limit of work at the 25 foot without prior consent of the commission. Um, we feel confident that they can construct these walls from the high side and um, not encroach beyond the waddles that'll be set um, at the limits of work. The other comments that were discussed was with regards to our erosion control plan, adding some um, areas that they could put some temporary sediment traps, which would basically be just smaller depressed areas that could collect the water, let sediment settle out, and then they would clean that and, and loam and seed it at the end of construction. Um, try to place them in lower areas where the natural grade would be falling towards. And then I did show some uh, dashed lines where they could they could cut in some diversion swales to these to these basins which would like as i said once construction's complete they would be uh, they would be you know the sediment would be cleaned up and these areas would be loamed and seeded again um this will all be more detailed in the stormwater pollution prevention plan that would be con completed uh, under the nipdes permit um by the contractor with in conjunction we usually get involved in the, the completion of those of those plans and copies of this those would would be submitted to the conservation commission as well. Um, there was another just minor comment with regard to the grading. There was a small area near this wall that we had still showed some two to one slope. We were able to make that a three to one, make it a little more stable. Um, and still stay outside the, the well outside the 25 foot there 
And then I believe the final comment that I had here was with regards to the materials of the roof. And I did go and do a little bit of research into that. Um, the stormwater management policy does require additional treatment for certain steel and copper roofs, which that's not as real standard practice. We're typically looking at um, rubber or bituminous roofing materials on these warehouses and um, we would take no exception to any kind of condition that if for some reason a copper or a steel roof was proposed we would add the pro you know the necessary pretreatment on on the roof drainage system um, for that but I, I don't see that being being a, a, an issue just double check my notes make sure that was I did. Um, I did lengthen the stone pads on the on the erosion control pan to 50 feet. Although I did note notice that the detail wasn't updated, but we'll make sure that that 40 turns is a 50 on the on the final construction drawings. But the the the, the line work on the site plan itself is. Um, I'll go back to that again. We did extend those out. The, the full 50 feet from the curb line into the site. So with that, I believe we've answered all the commission's concerns and would you know, be able to answer any additional questions and hopefully we can start working on and order conditions for this. Questions from members of the commission or comments from John? So it, it's I just my want, recollection. I just want to, sorry, I just want to let the commission know that I already drafted up a order conditions for this uh, for the applicant. So if the commission is comfortable with closing this project this evening and potentially issuing an order conditions, we can do it this evening if the commission feels comfortable. Okay. I just want to thank Rich for addressing those comments. Um, and John, if we want to add something about the uh, use of a metal roof, maybe just cite the stormwater regs for that um, in case they do switch it. Um, actually, we should probably ask them to confirm what type they're going to use prior to um, start construction. Yeah. I think that would be helpful. I have a tentative highlighted condition in there, just general okay. kind of, just to give you kind of an idea, but, you know, we can work on that condition when we work okay. through it. Thank you. All right. Uh, if there's no further questions or comments, we can consider a motion to close the hearing for file number 250-1137. Uh, I'll make that motion. Second. We have a motion by Lisa, seconded by Mark to close the hearing for file number 250-1137, roll call vote, beginning with Dan and Ron. Aye. Aye. And uh, Lisa and Mark. Aye. Aye. And I'll throw in an aye. So thank you guys. And uh, we'll be working on that in a little bit. Right. Um, thank you. So the next item thank is you, Joe. file number. Thank you, all. Uh, Thanks, next Richard. item is file number two fifty dash eleven thirty six zero Eddy Street. On my agenda, they're requesting a continuation until October sixteenth. Yeah, just to give the commission so some information is that the um, they're going to be in front of planning board. Uh, tomorrow night, so they're requesting continuance because of that. They need to have a, a better understanding as to kind of their direction. All right, so a motion was made by Dan for continuation. Second it by. Second. By Lisa, roll call vote, beginning with, I think, Mark and Dan. Aye. Aye. And Ron and Lisa. Aye. Aye. And I'll throw in an eye, the motion carries. So that completes our um, 
public hearings. We're now at uh, an amended um, order of conditions for zero south Washington Street. But uh, I think that hearing um, we, we don't have all the information on that. Is that correct? So I just received a, mes <clears throat> a message that they would like to request a continuance until October 16th. Now, did we, when that, so that was not on our agenda. Is that correct? We didn't act on that already tonight. It was, no. uh, okay. All right. Well, um, I don't know if, um, I mean, they're not on the agenda. I don't know if we have to. Well, was, it, was it advertised? It I was, it was, bucket. it was advertised. So okay, we need it's to under continue. the wrong bucket. It shouldn't be under request for certificate of compliance. It's done. To, oh, it is. That's actually, it's amendment, but shouldn't that be? It's a request. The, no, right? it's a request. You request an amendment, just like you would request a certificate of compliance, just like you would request an extension. Right, but those okay. other things are not. Those other things are not publicly advertised. The amended order is so. I don't. I think it should be under D. I think it should have been new letter D. It's That's still a, it's still a request though. So, but it's publicly advertised, right? It That's is. Okay. Right. That's okay. the difference. So it's a public hearing. It's part of the public process. So. I wouldn't mix that in with a request for COC for an extension because that's administrative, right? Just saying. Okay. I can change that for the next agenda, no problem. <laughs> well, that's why we it's still, confusing. It's, we, we still oh, okay. need to consider consider okay. D in the minutes. Um, so we, need, we need a motion. D in the minutes. No, just make it in as it is on the agenda, and then in the future it can go in D. So I will make a motion to um, continue the public hearing for file number D um, two fifty dash one 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 nine to the um, October sixteenth public meeting. All right. Motion by Lisa. Seconded by. No second. second. Well, I think Ron got the second. So roll call vote beginning with Mark okay. and Dan. Aye. Aye. And Ron and Lisa. Aye. Aye. And I'll throw in an aye, so the motion carries. Um, now, um, a certificate of compliance for 250-1079-145R Plain Street. Um, I have to refresh my memory on this one. So this is a very, um, I guess, long, linear lot. Um, but it, it's kind of like a flag lot uh, it's right near the overpass for 495 for Plain Street. And uh, they had to basically, I guess, install a driveway, a gravel driveway. And only that portion of that driveway was within conservation's jurisdiction. Um, and based on my review of the site, they put up the visual barrier posts and they are in compliance with what they were permitted to do. So my recommendations to the commission is just to issue a um, a final COC for this project because it looks to me that, and based on the as built, that the work was done per proposed plan. So I'll make a motion to issue a full certificate of compliance for 250 1079. Motion made by Lisa, seconded by. Second. Seconded by uh, Ron. So roll call vote beginning with Mark and Dan. Aye. Aye. And Ron and Lisa? Aye. Aye. And I'll throw in an eye. The motion carries. Um, request for extension. Um, again, uh, this you'll have to refresh my memory on this one. So this property is off of Baker Street. Uh, it was uh, I previously permitted um, by the commission, but the permit's about to expire, and they haven't really break in, broken any ground uh, for construction aspects to this project. Um, I think only a portion 
a portion of the project was within conservation jurisdiction. I think it was major major things were grading and some lawn area that was being done. Um, but this project, um, you know, there I think it's expires in November. So they were just trying to get this uh, for another two years. And I think they haven't really broken ground because of the costs and COVID thing. So um, now they're kind of looking to go on the up and up for kind of getting this project completed. So non-controversial, it sounds like. Not controversial at all. I'll make a motion to um, issue a two-year extension for file number 250-1068. Motion by Lisa, seconded by. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Roll call vote starting with Mark and Dan. Aye. Aye. And Ron and Lisa. Aye. Aye. And I'll throw in an aye. The motion carries. Um, we now have a um, order of conditions or uh, notice of intent, file number 250-1135-84 uh, um, Leonard Street. Um, so I don't know if you want to bring this up to discuss it or, I, I mean, it's, it's pretty much boilerplate, I think. But it is five pages. Anybody have any questions about this set of orders? Again, on my cap copy, the last two pages were blank, so I don't know if that's it. A Google I think that's, Maps yeah, that's a Google Google Drive re format issue. Yeah. Uh, I will make a motion to issue the order of conditions as drafted for 250-1135. All right, motion by Lisa, seconded by. Second. Seconded by uh, Mark. Um, roll call vote starting with Mark and Dan. Aye. Aye. And Ron and Lisa. Aye. Aye. And I'll throw in a nine. Motion carries. Uh, and I think. I think uh, so. Minutes are not available as I understand it. Uh, and report from staff. So, actually, we have a potential member on the call uh, tonight, Paxton Also, Hi, how's it going, everyone? I don't want to hold up your uh, Monday evening too much, but um spoke to John briefly about just attending one of these meetings. Uh, I have attended one in the past. Um, just recently out of school about two years ago um, and studied sustainability and international relations at American University. Um, I'm back home. I've lived in Norton my whole uh, life. So right on uh, North Washington Street, if any of you are familiar. Um, and I just thought I would kind of introduce myself and say hi and that I'm interested in the member position that is open. All right, and um, uh, just uh, be aware, it's a, a, a learning on the job, and it's pretty straightforward. Um, you don't take a t have to take a test, uh, and we can answer any questions you might have in the process. Um, and you'll be surprised how second nature it becomes over time. And um, I'm going to tell you from my own experience, there's a certain amount of satisfaction of being involved in a process of town government because it gives you the opportunity to see just how much careful thought goes in to making things work in all of the complexity of, of running a, a town that works well. And um, so 
if you're inclined, I think you'll enjoy being on the commission, and it's not a huge amount of time for the rewards to come out of it. Uh, and the process, John can tell you, is you request to be appointed uh, by talking to either the secretary, to the, the select board, or the town manager. Both of that, those are easily accessible. And then when you are informed you're appoint, appointed, you have to remember to go to the town clerk's office to become sworn in. Great. Does anyone have any questions for me? I'm happy to answer anything. Um, so you said uh, American University. Are you talking about in Lebanon or? Uh, no, so in Washington, D.C. So uh, there's. Oh, okay. That American uh, University. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No, not in Lebanon. But um, yeah, so uh, obviously, like you said, you know, I kind of expected a lot of things I kind of learned um, by experience just being on the on the board and um just overseeing things so that's kind of what i'm looking for um obviously the town has had a lot of new development in the past years it, you know I, every time i come back home see my folks um you know i see more development and i know that can be both good thing and bad thing for the town um so when it comes to conservation that's something i'm really interested in so i'd be happy to join all of you all right. It sounds very good. Thank All right. So it's great to me. Next mm -hmm. steps are basically for you to hand write a letter or email um, to me, or, and I'll forward it over to the, uh, the powers to be, the town manager and the select board chair, and hopefully we can move on from there. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Paxton. Thanks for attending. Nice to meet you, Paxton. Thanks, Paxton. Yeah. John Thomas, I had a question for you. Um, I happened to come across the legal, I normally don't read the Sun Chronicle, but it was dumped in my mailbox by accident instead of my Boston Globe last week. Um, and I saw our legal advertisement for all those, you know, the, the zero Mansfield abs. Okay. The average, I had no idea where it was. So the average person has no idea where that is. Is there any way we can update these legal ads to put a sentence or two, like I would have put for that one, I would have put between Reservoir Street and Mansfield Ave, you know, or at the intersection of those two streets. So the public can be much more informed than just having zero for an address. We've actually had, nothing. I know we've, we've had absolutely nothing. We've had this conversation. The unfortunate part about it is that the town has taken a stance on calling all projects without that don't have a physical address zero. So you, you'd be surprised to see how many people come in front of, you know, us with, oh, this is zero, you know, Mansfield, that's right up the street from me. It's like, no, that's not right up the street from you. That's actually, you know, a thousand feet away from you. But they just don't know that, for instance, if a, if a property doesn't have a dis designated address, it's given the zero place tag. And that that's kind of unfortunate where we are because we don't make those rules. We don't make those kind of designations. The fire no, department. I, I just, understand that yeah. part. But we need to add a sentence or two to every legal ad if there's a zero address to say where the location is. That's what I'm saying. So, yeah, so the problem, though, is, like, if there's no intersection, like, so, for instance, this one's at the intersection of Reservoir and Mansfield Ave. Well, there's two locations where I think Reservoir meets, right? I'm just saying, like, if there's two two locations, it's going to get convoluted. So, you know, it just becomes, that's why we put the assessor's parcel with the um, map and um, block I on I still it. think we can do a better job. We can measure sure. what distances we can say located a 1,000 feet from the intersection of whatever. I just think or, we're really or, or, or there there are address assigned addresses uh, across the street. So yeah. you know, with with Google Maps you could kind of bracket it with between number such and such yeah. and number such and such. So um, the other thing is legal notices are paid for by the applicant and the Sun Chronicle charges per word. So if I add extra, it becomes an additional fee to the applicant. I can do it. I don't mind. But I think so the applicant what? might so have to do it. Right now, the message is 
nothing. It means nothing. I mean, I looked at that legal ad and I said, I have no idea what this is for. I'm seeing three zero Mansfield ads. It that could just, just as nothing. easily just as easily be taken as something at the other end of yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, Mansfield Ave. So if it informs the public, I don't care whether it costs the applicant another 300 bucks because we're not doing the public any favors by putting to zero Mansfield Ave. So point. then, so then I'll put a policy on our website that says all legal ads must be written by the applicant with the following information, and basically, you know, just list list it, give them a boilerplate legal ad, and they have to fill in the blanks. That's what yes. I'm gonna have. To, that's what I'm gonna have to do because yes. otherwise, otherwise, people are, the legal ads are all going to be different, and I'm basically you need to make a template for them, and they're going to yes. have to take that and copy that and submit it to the Sun Chronicle. I mean, just where it says zero, right? No, I'm just saying in general. I mean, that's the other problem. I mean, so if we're going to do it, we got to do it for all of them, right? We can't just do it for zero. No, no. If the other ones have an address that somebody can Google, right, then fine. But if it's going to be zero, you can't, it's not going to tell you anything. That's what I mean. No, it so the, is, ones with, yeah. the ones with an address, I think, are fine. It's all the zeros. Yeah, it, it can't uh, increase the cost very much to put in three or four more words. I mean, what is it, uh, 75 cents a word or something like that? Uh, I'm not maybe. sure what the actual fee is. I don't have an issue with it. I just... Yeah. No, I, understand we, it, I understand it costs more, but I think we're doing a disservice to the people in this town. No, I mean, you, you, you not can make... Not describing where this is. You can make the argument that it's not a legitimate advertisement if, if the location is not defined. I mean, the, the assessor's maps are available online to view by anybody, or they can go to the town hall to view the, view the assessor's maps for the parcel information. So it yes, is available to the public. Does the ad include that information? It, yes. It has the okay. map, map and parcel information. So it's an extra step for them, um, but at the same point, you know, I, I also do list on the ad, um, please call the office for any questions. Um, but again, it's either way, it's fine. Yeah, and I think, you know, making the statement that the the um, plan and parcel number uh, is there is not really a fair advertisement for the average person who is familiar with addresses, not with... Uh, map and parcel numbers so so that's that's a, a level of complexity i don't think you can right i also don't want to be misleading though when there's potential for misinterpretation misinterpretation of where the property is i don't want to be held liable for that so um i guess my question John, is why would, why would you be liable for well, if liable? you say the word near 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 like it doesn't say it is that parcel it is okay that so i'd have to use the right of the in the vicinity of, I can give you a million synonyms. That okay, you know, so we just say in, in the east, vicinity north, of. North, south, east, west, and okay. then give uh, the I distance think, in meters or I think feet the, or whatever. I think, I think the easiest thing would be, say, in the vicinity of a certain address and yeah. then leave it at that. Yep, you should have said, you know, on the, on the north side of whatever street, in the vicinity of blank, you know, blank. That's all. Or closest or, or to. At, the intersection, or just say at the intersection of Reservoir and Mansfield Ave. Yeah, closest yeah, to... And that, that will allow people to identify whether it's adjacent their property or near their property, etc. So Right, okay. Sounds fine. I can make uh, have Megan make that change, and we can have a template made so that way people can follow it. Good thinking, LC. Hey, sometimes I do read the Sun Chronicle by accident, so see, that's what it did. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, so the, uh, the minutes uh, uh, do entirely to me, the minutes uh, were not turned in until, uh, I don't know, 5.30 or something today. So anyway, they are in. But they're not in. I mean, they're not. Uh, well, you know. Man, dude, yeah, some towns are months and months and months behind. Don't. It's okay. Yeah, we do a pretty damn good yeah, job. Yeah, we should say you 
do a pretty yeah. damn yeah. Pretty yeah. Good. Dan to quote to quote um, Game of Thrones, winter is coming. No, no, no. <laughs> Well, I haven't seen uh, I haven't seen Game of Thrones, but uh, have you read the books? Uh, that, that worries me. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm but I do I'm, like Peter Dinklage. I'm really left out. I I didn't see Succession. I didn't see Game of Thrones. I don't see any te television. Well, you can't uh, use Netflix anymore because they are. They know well. I mean, for DVDs, that is, uh, they don't have their DVDs anymore. So, anyway. All right. So I think we're done. Yes. Yes, we are. We're at the coffee and donuts portion. Oh, I'm I'm at the the din, din, the din din portion. I was thinking maybe right. cookies and milk, Dan, before bed. You know. Cookies and milk. That sounds yeah. good. I like that. Yeah. All right. Good. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, everyone.